Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series on single variable calculus. Today we're going to be discussing how we can use single variable calculus, such as integrals, interprivatives, and other algebraic tricks, uh, to solve what is called differential equations. So obviously to solve differential equations, you have to know exactly what a differential equation is. But in short, it's just an equation such as y prime equals some function of x. And we're interested in knowing what function has this as its derivative, or what function y or what curve uh, f of x, y satisfies some relation in terms of its coordinates and its differentials. So what function has a derivative of 5x squared minus 3x plus 9e to the x? Just from basic antiderivatives, you should know the solution to this, right? But nonetheless, this is called a differential, a differential equation and some people will even abbreviate it as an ODE or an ordinary differential equation because it has just your typical ordinary derivatives in it. So if we just uh, rewrite y prime as just dy over dx and multiply both sides by dx, then we get dy is equal to 5x squared minus 3x plus 9e to the x dx. And then we can just integrate both sides uh, of this particular relation. And on the left-hand side, we're just going to be left with y. And on the right-hand side, we're just going to be left with 5 thirds x cubed minus 3 halves x squared plus 9e e to the x plus c. So this is the solution to the differential equation. Uh, but some people, you will usually write this as the general solution uh, to the differential equation um, because we have this plus c so it's not really a particular solution. So usually what people do if they're they want a particular solution is they'll rephrase the question in the following way. So let's assume we want to solve y prime equals 5x squared minus 3x plus 9 uh, with what we call the initial condition y of 0 is equal to 4. So this is called the initial condition. And usually when we have a differential equation equipped with an initial condition, sometimes we call this an initial value problem, or IVP for short. So how would you find the particular solution to a differential equation given an initial condition? Well, first we find the general solution. So the general solution for this differential equation was y equals 5 thirds x cubed minus 3 halves x squared plus 9e e to the x plus c. And then we use our initial condition to figure out what c would be. So this is equal to x and this is equal to y. So when we substitute y for 4 and x to be 0, we're going to have 4 is equal to 5 thirds times 0 cubed minus 3 halves 0 squared uh, plus 9e e to the 0 plus c. So obviously those will eliminate and e to the power of zero is equal to one. So I'm gonna have four is equal to nine plus c, forcing c to be equal to negative five. So once I have uh, my constant c, then I have y is equal to five thirds x to the power of three minus three halves x squared plus nine e to the x minus five. And this object that we have here is what we call a particular, a particular solution uh, to the differential equation. So what exactly uh, is the graphical meaning for general solutions and particular solutions? So pretty much what a differential equation says is it describes how a function or a curve changes over a, uh, some realm of space or some period of time. So for example, one of the solutions could be equal to this. And keep in mind, if it's a function of x, the maxima and the minima uh, will be located at the same x coordinate regardless of the value of c, because plus c is just a vertical shift of your uh, function. So for example, this could be another solution. This could be another solution. This could be a, another solution. This could be another solution, and so on, assuming they're drawn to scale. So these, or this space, is called the general solutions of the ODE. And if I were to pick a particular point, for example, this point right here, let's call that 0, 4, then there's only going to be one uh, function or curve that passes through that point, in particular, this one 
right? So that would be your particular solution uh, to the differential equation, which is just one of potentially infinitely many uh, uh, general solutions in that particular solution space. Most of the time in the realm of differential equations, you cannot just integrate directly to get your solution y. Take for a basic example, y prime is equal to xy plus y. Notice that we have x's on the right hand side and also y's on the right hand side. So if we were to just integrate both sides of this equation with respect to x, you're gonna have dy is equal to xy plus y uh, multiplied by dx and then we would integrate uh, both sides and the integral of dy would just be y but on the right hand side we don't know what y is so we can't integrate what y, x times y is right so pretty much this gives us what we call an integral equation which is sometimes even more difficult to solve than that of a differential equation so what we want to do is we want to isolate uh, the x terms and the y terms if possible in this equation. And if we can do such things, then we call that differential equation a separable differential equation. So notice that I can factor out y out of the right hand side. I'm going to have dy over dx is equal to y times x plus one. And then I'm going to isolate my x and my y terms. So I'm gonna have dy over y is gonna be equal to x plus one dx and notice uh, very importantly then that what we have here uh, is something of the form f of y dy is equal to g of x dx so this is usually what we refer to as a separable differential equation if it can be represented uh, in this particular form which we have done so once we have separated our y and x terms all we're going to do is just integrate both sides of this relation so on the left hand side we're going to have the natural log of y plus some constant c1 and on the right hand side we're going to have one half x squared plus x plus some constant c2 and c1 and c2 are just arbitrary constants so i'm just going to flush both of them on the right hand side and just call it c so then i'm going to have the natural log and keep in mind most people will also write this as the absolute value of y and that's going to be equal to one half x squared plus x uh, plus some constant c Right, so one half x squared plus x plus some constant c. Uh, now, some people will leave the solution uh, in this particular form because notice it does not have any derivatives in it, therefore it's not a differential equation. So some people will sometimes refer to this as an implicit solution uh, to the differential equation, but a lot of people would like this uh, solved in terms of y, but that's not always algebraically possible. Uh, but in this case it is, so we can exponentiate both sides by e, and we're going to have y is equal to e to the power of one half x squared plus x plus c. Um, but I can break this up into two exponentials. I can write this as e to the one half x squared plus x times e to the power of c, because c is an arbitrary constant, so e to the c is just as arbitrary. So we can actually call this another constant, let's assume k, and then we can write the solution in a more sometimes meaningful way, as y is equal to some constant times e to the power one half x squared plus x. Whereas so here, this is our general solution uh, to our separable differential equation. Uh, and if somebody gives you a initial condition, for example, let's assume that the equation was originally posed as y prime equals xy plus y with the initial condition that y of zero is equal to five, then we take our general solution, use this as our y, use this as our x and figure out what k should be. So we're gonna have five is equal to k times e to the one half zero squared plus zero, but zero plus zero is zero and e to the zero is one. So we're gonna have, this is just gonna be equal to k and that's gonna be the value of five. So therefore the particular solution uh, will be equal to y is equal to five times e to the one half x squared plus x. So that would be your particular solution to this initial value problem. Now let's assume that you can write a differential equation in this particular way. y prime plus a of x, y is equal to b of x, where a and b are some functions, for example, 1 over x, sine x, x squared, and so on. So obviously, uh, this is not necessarily a separable equation, and if a of x is uh, not equal to zero, then you can't directly integrate to get your solution. But obviously, those uh, very easily integrable uh, 
differential equations can be represented in this form if a of x is indeed equal to zero. So let's actually take an example of a what we call linear differential equation, see if we can solve it. So we have x squared y prime plus two of x times y is equal to e to the two x, and let's throw an initial condition of y zero is equal to three. So pause this video if you think you can solve this. So the very first thing to note is that it is a linear differential equation. Uh, I could divide both sides of this equation by x squared, and then my ax will be 2x over x squared, and my bx will be equal to e to the 2x over x squared. But actually what I want to do is I want to keep it in this way and observe what I have on the left-hand side. So notice that if I call x squared uh, u, then du will be equal to 2x. If I call v to be y, then v prime will be equal to y prime. So pretty much what I have on the left-hand side is just a product rule. In particular, this is just the product rule of the derivative of x squared times y. And I suggest you uh, check that just to make sure that that is indeed what the derivative of x squared y is using implicit differentiation. So I have the derivative of x squared y, where y is the solution that we're aiming for, and that's going to be equal to e to the 2x. Uh, and then I can multiply both sides by my differential dx, so I'm going to have d of x squared y, so d of some variable, is equal to e to the 2x times the derivative or the differential of that variable. And then I can integrate both sides of this equation, and then I'm going to have on the left-hand side x squared y plus some constant c1, and that's going to be equal to 1 half e to the 2x plus some constant c2. Combine both of those constants on the right-hand side, and let's just call that c. So this is going to be my implicit general solution to my differential equation. And keep in mind, we can use this initial condition to find our particular solution. So when x is equal to 0, I'm going to have 0 squared. And then y is going to be equal to 3. And then we're going to have 1 half e to the power of 2 times 0, which is just going to be 1 half. And then we're going to have plus c again. So we're going to have 0 is equal to 1 half plus c forcing c to be equal to negative 1 half. And then that's going to give us a particular or our implicit solution to our differential equation. So I'm going to have x squared y is equal to 1 half e to the 2x plus 1 half. e to the 2x plus 1 half. So you could leave it like this, uh, or if you're requested to, find the explicit solution to this differential equation, which just requires us to uh, divide both sides by x squared. So we have y will be equal to, we can write it as 1 over 2x squared, um, since everything's going to be divided by x squared. And notice everything is also multiplied by 1 half, so I can factor that out as well. And I'm going to have 2x uh, plus 1, actually minus 1 half, minus 1 half because the c was negative one half. And this will be our particular solution uh, to our differential equation. All right? Uh, now, a very important thing uh, to note for this particular linear differential equation was we were able to easily observe it to be a backwards product rule. So one question, uh, what if the linear ordinary differential equation was not in a, let's put it in a nice way, called nice, uh, product rule form, right? Uh, and obviously the answer will be uh, make it nice. So if it's not nice, make it nice. But then the theoretical question, can we always make a linear differential equation a nice differential equation such that an inverse product rule can be applied? And the answer actually is yes. So if y prime plus axy is equal to b of x, uh, and let's assume that it's not nice in this particular general sense, then multiplying multiplying both sides by this function, f of x is equal to e to the antiderivative of ax dx, um, regardless of the arbitrary constancy that generates from that, will make it nice. 
I won't get into the proof of this here, but definitely in a more formal differential equations environment, uh, this would need to be justified. And a more formal uh, verbiage of what it means to be nice also would have to be instantiated. Right? So some people will also call this uh, an integrating factor, an integrating factor. Right? So if it's not nice, multiply both sides of this equation by that function f, and it makes it nice. So let's actually look through a numerical example to sort of see how this works. So let's assume we have this differential equation, which you can verify to be linear, because we have a function of x here, a function of x here, a function of x here, and we can divide both sides of this equation by x to get it in what we call the standard linear form of the differential equation. In particular, y prime minus 2xy is equal to 5. And we also have an initial condition so that we can get a particular solution if we're interested. So is this a quote unquote nice differential equation? Actually, no. Obviously, the derivative of y is located here, but the derivative of 1 is not equal to minus 2x. Right? So we can't just use the product rule here. Therefore, we have to multiply both sides um, by what we call the integrating factor. So notice in this particular equation, once we have written it in standard form, the function in front of y is minus 2x. So this is what we refer to as a. So the integrating factor, f of x, equals the e to the integral of that particular function ax. So in this case, that's going to be e to the integral of minus 2x dx, which is going to be e to the minus x squared. And you can put the plus c here, but actually you don't need it. And I'll let you sort of explore why we can just avoid that plus c. Uh, hint, it cancels on both sides when you multiply by e to the c. So uh, if I multiply both sides of my equation by e to the minus x squared, will it really turn it into a nice differential equation for which I can just use the inverse product rule to solve it? The answer is actually beautifully yes. So I'm going to have e to the minus x squared times y prime, and then minus 2x times e to the minus x squared times y, and that's going to be equal to e 5 times e to the minus x squared on the right-hand side. Right. So let's just take a look and see what we have here. So y's derivative is equal to y prime, and the derivative of e to the minus x squared is e to the minus x squared times the derivative of minus x squared, which is minus 2x. So its derivative is indeed there. And the right-hand side usually just turns into an integration problem. So as long as you can take the integral of the right-hand side, then you won't have any problems. So what I have here on the left-hand side is the derivative of y times e to the minus x squared, and that's going to be equal to 5 e to the minus x squared. And now I just need to isolate my differential, so I'm going to have the differential of y e to the minus x squared will be equal to 5 e to the minus x squared times the differential of x. So now I just need to integrate both sides of this relation, and then I will be done. Now, the first question you need to figure out is, do you know how to find the antiderivative of e to the minus x squared? You might remember that e to the minus x squared does not have an elementary primitive, so we have to use special functions to evaluate that. So what I want to do is introduce a square root of pi over 2 and a 2 over square root of pi, uh, since e to the minus x squared is in the family of error functions. Right? So I'm going to have this constant just chilling in front, and then we're going to have e to the minus x squared and 2 over square root of pi as our error function once we anti-differentiate it. So before I do that, I'm just going to write it as dy e to the minus x squared, and then we're going to have 5 square roots of pi over 2, times 2 over the square root of pi e to the minus x squared. So once I have that, then I'm going to uh, differentiate or anti-differentiate both sides of this expression. And let's not forget our uh, differential of x. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to have what? So I'm going to have y e to the minus x squared. And that's going to be equal to 5 times the square root of pi divided by 2 times the error function of x. And that's just e r f erf of x, and then let's not forget our lonely little constant plus c. So here, uh, provided that you uh, knew what the error function was, this is our general solution 
uh, to our differential equation. So now we can use our particular solution or use our initial condition uh, y is 0 is equal to 3 to generate our particular solution. And keep in mind, if you do not know what the error function is, it has one of the special properties that the error function of 0 is equal to 0, in case you're curious. So what do we have here? So y is going to be equal to 3. So we're going to have 3 times e to the minus 0 squared will be equal to 5 times the square root of pi divided by 2 times the error function evaluated at 0 plus c. Uh, what do we have here? So this term is going to cancel because the error function of 0 is equal to 0. Uh, this is equal to 1, and then we're going to have 3 on the left. So we're going to have 3 is equal to c. So that is our arbitrary constant. Uh, so then we can just throw this back in into our equation, and then we can get our uh, particular solution. So we're going to have what? So we're going to have y is equal to, let's multiply both sides by e to the x squared if we want to. And then we're going to have 5 square roots of pi over 2 times the error function of x plus 3. And you probably would leave it here, or you can distribute that e to the x squared term uh, into the bracket if you want. But that's your particular solution. Right. Uh, now, obviously, I'm just focusing on the algebraic nature and showing sort of how single variable calculus like derivatives and single variable integrals uh, can help you solve these things known as differential equations. Now, what are differential equations useful for? Almost anything. And they're very, very beautiful objects once you understand the ins and outs of them. But we'll describe that more in our differential equation series. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.